So, what are the types? There are different types of NoSQL systems. So, there are four main types of NoSQL systems. Okay. So, we will just briefly go over them. Note that the whole uh, issue of NoSQL systems may be another half course or whatever. I mean, it, it can be very large, but okay. There are four main types of NoSQL systems. The first one is the columnar database family. So, columnar database, columnar databases. The second is the big table systems. The third one is the document databases. You may or may not have heard the names of this. So, these are nowadays becoming very, very popular and uh, so may have heard the names of these things, but anyway. And the fourth one is graph databases. Okay, so, let us uh, go over uh, each one of them one by one. So, the first one is columnar storage. So, columnar storage or columnar families, it is a columnar storage or columnar families or columnar databases, etcetera. All right. So, one important thing is that um, how is data stored uh, in our DBMSs is they are stored in a row manner. So, what does it say to store in a row manner is that think of a typical relational table. So, there is tuple 1, then tuple 1 has attribute 1, then attribute 2, attribute 3, so on and so forth and after that it is tuple 2. So, how is it actually stored in the disk? Disk is essentially, uh, I mean, you, I mean the one dimensional, right, because logically it is stored in tracks, uh, sectors, one sector after another, so on and so forth. So, what it is done is that each tuple is taken, all its attributes are stored and then the next tuple's attributes are stored and then the third tuples and so on and so forth. So, that is called the row wise storage. So, to highlight what I am trying to say, this is the normal database uh, table, right. So, this is all the tuples. So, this is tuple 1, tuple 2 and so on and so forth and while as this is attribute 1, attribute 2 and so on and so forth. So, in a row based storage what is being done is that this is stored, then 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 this is stored, okay. So, that is why. So, this is called a row based storage. Okay. On the other hand, what is being done for the columnar families is that this is stored, then this is stored, then this is stored and so on and so forth. So, all everything up to this is done, then attributes 2 is stored. So, what is this is being done is that this is the column based storage. So, in column based storage, what is essentially done is that the first attribute of all the tuples are stored. So, the attribute 1 is taken, the it is value for tuple 1 that is stored, then for tuple 2 it is stored, then tuple 3 and so on and so forth up to all the tuples. Then the attribute 2's values are stored for tuple 1, tuple 2, so on and so forth. So, it is stored in an attribute wise manner. So, that is the column storage. That is why it is called a columnar family or column uh, the based storage or columnar family, columnar databases, etcetera. So, essentially, this is the idea of storage and there are a couple of things is that, so a single disk block or contains a single what is called a column family, there is a concept of a column family. So, column family is that instead of storing it one column at a time, you can group certain columns together and that can be stored. So, a column family, this is stored in a single, I mean, so every disk block contains only a single uh, column family. So, single column family in every disk block. So, every disk block stores only a single column family. So, if it is a new column family, it is a next block is stored and so on and so forth. So, that is the, this is the concept of a column family. Okay. So, either a column or a set of related columns together. So, this can be either one attribute or a set of related attributes. Okay. So, that is called a column family. Fine. So, then uh, this set of columns is sometimes also called a super column. So, the column family storage, this is this uh, set of thing is also called a super column. Okay. So, that is the uh, super column. So, so essentially suppose uh, the example is that attribute 1 and attribute 2 is pertaining to one super family, then attribute 3 by itself is uh, one super family, then attribute 
फोर एट्रीब्यूट फाइव एट्रीब्यूट सिक्स इज एनदर सुपर फैमिली देन वट हैपन्स इज दैट दिस इज स्टोर सो दिस सो दिस इज दिस सो दिस इज ट्रिपल वन दिस इज स्टोर देन दिस इज स्टोर then this is stored and so on so forth and after that is finished a new disk block starts so how many disk blocks it takes and then this is stored then this is stored then this is stored and so on so forth then that is finished then this is stored because this is all part of the same column family so then all the attributes are stored one after another then this is stored and then this is stored and so on so forth okay so that's the idea of a column family or a super column okay now out of this columnar families there are two main types of things so first is the so this is the columnar relational models okay so there are essentially two main types of things the first is a columnar relational model and the second is a key value stores so also sometimes these are also or the big tables what are called the big tables okay so very very importantly whenever we say column storage so even the column storage is considered to be part of no sql note that column storage is can be relational models so that is why it is called not only sql because these are part of the these relational models are also no sql so columnar storage is just by itself doesn't mean just the fact that it is no sql doesn't mean it is not rdbms columnar storages can be rdbms so this can be relational models as well okay so this is essentially what we have been just uh, studying about so this is rdbms and it is stored uh, one after another now couple of things about columnar relational models is the following is that see when attributes are stored uh, when when these are stored in a attribute wise manner it allows compression of attributes now what does it say means to say it allows compression of attributes suppose there are uh, many tuples which share the same attribute suppose there are 100 such tuples which share the same attribute so what can be done is that only one copy of that attribute value can be stored and it can be said that okay this is shared by tuples whose ids are from whatever 900 uh, or some 1 to 100 Or two hundred thirteen to three hundred twelve, and so on so forth. So this that can, that will allow compression. Now, compression saves two things. First of all, it takes a lesser amount of storage, lesser because it you are of course compressing it. That's the thing. Also, very very importantly, this can allow faster querying. This can allow faster querying. Why will it allow faster querying? There are two reasons why it will allow faster querying. So, first of all, okay. when uh, so suppose you need to find all uh, tuples whose value is greater than something etc so now you go to one tuple and instead of going over all the tuples you go to that value and you skip over that 100 tuples all together so that's one way of doing is that's one uh, good thing about compression even if this is not compressed so these are these are the gains of this thing even if it is not compressed faster querying can be allowed faster querying is also true when only i mean one only one uh, attribute is queried so what does this mean so this needs to be understood in a little bit manner so suppose there is a selection query which says select everything from the relation where a greater than 4 okay what is the uh, basic manner of doing it is that it goes over the tuples then it goes to the attribute of a checks it and if it is correct it uh, says it is correct it is output otherwise it is not then it goes to the next tuple checks the attribute of a and so on so forth okay now how much so it is essentially going over the disk it is essentially uh, going over all the other attributes which are not a and skipping it's not checking it but it is actually going over now in the disk what does it mean to go over it's actually taking more blocks to study more blocks to query so this is what i am trying to say so suppose this one row this is attribute a that i am interested in this takes uh, let us say four bytes and suppose there is another 20 bytes here and another some 48 bytes here right so to go from attribute a to here you are essentially wasting a uh, going over 68 bytes this 48 plus this 20 only then you are reaching the next a correct so in a disk block how many such tuples can be stored or how many such tuples where only a is such can be stored this is essentially 
the disk block size be divided by 20 plus 4 plus 48. So, this is 72, right. So, that many number of tuples can be stored. So, that many number of attribute A's can be searched by accessing one disk block. However, if this is stored in a columnar manner, then what is being done is essentially attribute A of tuple 1 is stored, then attribute 2 of tuple 1 is stored and so on and so forth. This is all 4 blocks and so on and so forth. These are all stored together. So, then how many such attribute A's can be stored in one block? This is B by 4. So, you see that is a larger number, much larger number. So, it is a larger number and, and so it is uh, quite beneficial if it is stored by attributes because just by one disk block access more tuples and more attributes or uh, more, more attributes in more tuples can be searched. So, that so the single attribute in more tuples can be searched. So, that is so, it, so more tuples can be decisions about more tuples can be taken by searching that. So, that is the one good thing about this thing and just to uh, just to continue this, this allows also faster joins. So, why what are joins? What gen joins are generally on two columns, one column from table A and another column from table B. Now, essentially you just go over that table A and other attribute in the table B, the attribute A in table the first table and attribute B in the second table and that again by accessing lesser number of these blocks more such uh, joins, the join conditions between uh, more tuples can be checked. And only if that attribute A values and attribute B values are matching, then the actual uh, tuple needs to be bothered about, the actual tuple needs to be output. So, the, even the joins are fast. Okay. Having said all of this, so these are essentially the advantages of uh, columnar storages. Okay. So, these are the advantages of columnar storages. Now, what are the disadvantages? There are certain disadvantages as well. So, the disadvantages are the following is that updates. So, updates are not good, updates are not good at all because now what does updating mean? Updating generally means that um, a particular uh, a tuple is updated of course, I mean uh, the particular attribute either even if it is one attribute is updated or multiple attributes are updated. So, multiple attributes suppose there are multiple attributes are updated for a single tuple. Now, how many blocks does it require in a row based storage to get the complete tuple? It is just one disk block because tuples are stored, a particular tuple is always stored in a single disk block. Now, here whatever is the number of column families or super columns that many blocks need to be accessed. So, here is the idea is that if it is row based storage this entire tuple sup suppose this is attribute A, this, this is attribute B and so on and so forth and this is attribute C everything is stored in a single block. So, if there are three updates that needs to be done, the tuple is brought from the memory and this is one single block, uh, tuple is brought to the memory from the disk, one single block that is it. However, if it is row based storage, this is in one block, this again is in another block because uh, in this other block there are attributes only of the same type, right. This is not other attributes, so that is they are not there. This is again attributes of this type only. And again, so the third attribute is again in another block. So, this will require three blocks. So, that is the difference between, so this is in uh, row and this is in column. So, updates are much uh, slower. If the update uh, involves more than one attribute, it is much slower for uh, columnar families, columnar databases. Also, if the uh, query or the join, uh, uh, if the query generally, if the query touches multiple attributes, then it is also not faster, um, it may not be faster, it is not clear, it will depend on lots of other parameters, it may not be faster because it again goes to, it, it, it accesses a tuple when if it check, if, if that value passes it needs to go and to the other disk block to access the attribute of the same tuple and then it needs to uh, see that and so on and so forth. So, it may or may not be faster. So, when multiple attributes are done, it may not be any uh, faster. So, that is and anyway the algorithms need to take care of this handling different things and keeping the idea of the tuple ID etcetera though so on so forth can be there. All right. So, then essentially uh, there are two terms uh, in the database that is uh, in, the, in the commercial databases that is being done is that. So, columnar families are uh, columnar things are good for OLAP and 
bad for OLTP. Okay. So, the OLAP and OLTP these are two new terms. So, OLAP this stands for online analytical processing or analytic processing and this stands for online transaction processing. So, what does this mean uh, analytical and P stands for? So, this is online analytical processing and the other is of course, online transactional processing. Okay? So, the same thing. So, what is OLAP essentially uh, versus OLTP? OLTP is essentially transaction. So, just uh, single updates are being done or some small part, a very, very small part of the, uh, the database is updated. So, a single tuple or a couple of tuples like that account A, account B, it is only account A tuple is updated and account B tuple is updated. These transactions, these transactions uh, touch only a very small part of the things, but they touch probably multiple attributes of these things. So, for that, uh, Co columnar families are not good because the relational databases can do it much faster if they are doing it. However, for this analytical online analytical processing, what happens is that suppose you are trying to find out the summary of certain things, the average over all balance, all accounts, then the relational databases, the, the, the traditional row based relational databases will take a longer time as opposed to columnar databases because they access that column much faster and can do this uh, summaries and aggregation operations much faster. So, these are the two standard terms OLAP and OLTP. Okay? And one big uh, example of uh, this uh, relational databases is uh, you must uh, remember the name which is uh, MoneyDB. MoneyDB is a example of a uh, columnar uh, relational database. Okay? MoneyDB. Okay. 